Hey y'all, welcome to FRC Forecast. I'm your host, Angel Miranda, bringing you the latest for week six. We have an exciting show for you today as we'll be covering all of the district championships. We'll be providing locks, contenders, dark horses. With that being said, let's get right into the forecast and see what our correspondents have to say. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. We begin by going to the New England District Championship, where we have our correspondent Ari covering the Richardson Division. Ari? Six weeks of New England events, and it all comes down to this. This is the New England District Championship event. We're going to start with our first division, the Richardson Division. 48 teams are going to venture to the Big E, where hopefully they'll have less issues with the dirt floor now that we have installed a plastic field. This event has the highest of the highs in terms of EPAs, sporting some of the biggest names not only in New England, but in FRC as a whole. We have two locks at this event that are really going to take your first seed and your captain alliance. The number one is going to be 176 Aces High. They're looking for back-to-back -back district championship wins, and with this robot, I think they could do it. This robot is a stellar melody ranking point machine. They have a vertical shooter that pivots on an arm and can hit shots from just about anywhere on the wing. Another robot with a similar archetype that is also going to be a lock in this division is 6328 Mechanical Advantage. They're looking to take the division this year instead of losing out in finals two aces high on the opposite side of the field. They're no stranger to the Einstein field and they're looking to go back this year. We know that they can play that at that elite level and this robot is looking like it's their best yet. They have a vertical shooter on a pivoting arm, but they also have the ability to do the trap and they're one of the most consistent teams on the field that's going to do that. So expect them to seed high in order to be able to pick. We also have a number of amazing teams also in this division, but there's two contenders that stand out that could knock our locks off the top. Number one is Team 1768. I have been on the hype train with them all this season. They are Neshoba Robotics. They are the sharpshooter archetype. They have a vertical shooter with an arm that pivots as well. They were the first pick at their three events, so they've had a lot of field time, and they are definitely one of the best robots out there for this event. They had issues with their climber at their last event, but they'll be solved for this event, expect them to make a deep run and get picked high. Our second contender is Team 5687, the Outliers. They are the fastest robot probably on the entire Crescendo field. They were the first pick at each of their events. Their cycle times are going to be so quick, especially because they can get there really fast and then they shoot from far away. So expect them to be picked high. And then our last team here, we have our one dark horse, the team that could upset all of them if picked in the correct position. And that is going to be team 5112, the Gongoliers. Definitely not a robot that you would pick out as like one of those upper echelon teams, but their driving sets them apart. They are probably, I would argue, the best defense robot in all of Crescendo right now, just because of how they drive and how they play each of the lanes. So... They're a defense robot, but also we've heard rumors in New England that they have done a full rebuild to the 3467 Wyndham windup architecture. So we'll see how they turn out. Watch, be sure to watch them for their driving and see where they get picked because if they play defense, they're going to be a dark horse for sure. So be sure to turn in to the Richardson division. Uh, in terms of alliances, I think we're gonna see 6328, 176, and 558 take it all. But that's just my prediction. All right, we'll see you there. Thanks, Ari. Let's move over to Steven, who will be covering the Ganson Division. Steven? Who's ready for Springfield? The wait is over. Division assignments are out. Let's dig right into my predictions for the Ganson Division at this year's New England District Championship. It's going to be cold and wet outside the Big E Coliseum this weekend. But that's okay, because these 48 robots are bringing the heat in what's going to be three days of intense competition. Let's jump right in with my first lock, and that's going to be 6329, the Bucks Wrath. They won Curie Division last year in Houston, and they already have two district event wins under their belt this season. 
with the highest EPA in the division, I think it's safe to say that they're making room on their wall already for another blue banner. But this is New England DCMP, and no one is safe, because my next locked-in pick also won their division at Worlds last year, and they also won every event they've gone to this year, and that's Team 125, the Neutrons. The stalwart powerhouse of New England is on a roll this season, and it'll take an extremely well-balanced alliance just to slow them down. Moving on to my two contender picks. First, I'm going to start with 3467 Wyndham Windup and their robot Nocturne. This robot is super fast across the field with an under-the-bumper intake and rock-solid auto sequences. They're looking to add a blower-style trap note score ahead of DCMP after their win at Greater Boston. Uh, and if they can pull it off, they would make an already super powerful robot even deadlier. My second contender is another team that won their district event with 125 this season, and that's 78 Airstrike. The only thing that seems to be holding them back is there weren't that many other climbing robots at previous events, holding back their endgame EPA. But that's going to change now that the field of competitors has concentrated in strength. I would expect to see their endgame EPA climb just like Wyndham's, and that'll help both of these teams take on Buck's Wrath and Neutrons as all four of these offensive titans battle it out for the top spot. Now to my Dark Horse. And it's not an easy choice with how many strong robots are making up the midfield. But if I have to choose one, it's going to be 5735 Control Freaks. I just played against them last weekend at WPI, and it's clear that they are on an upswing this season. Let's hope they can keep that momentum going at DCMP. So... Who is going to take it all and face off against the Richardson division winner? My prediction is an alliance made up of 125 Neutrons, 78 Airstrike, and 2370 iBots that will take home the blue banner. As for me, I'll be on the other side of the arena battling it out on Richardson division. Good luck to all the teams this weekend, and I'll see everyone in Springfield. Thanks, Stephen. Let's move over to the Ontario district, where we have Tyler Olds covering the technology division. Tyler? The Ontario Provincial Championship is something that I'm incredibly excited to be traveling out to. So many fantastic teams that represent the power of Ontario, and we have two fantastic divisions to provide our predictions for. I'll be starting out with the Technology Division, and then passing it over to James to cover science. First off, don't sleep on technology. They actually have a higher average EPA than science, and while they may be missing out on the powerhouse that is like 2056 OP Robotics, there are some fantastic teams and some really cool teams, and I think overall technology will end up being more competitive than what science will be. Picking a lock for this division was incredibly difficult, but we have one lock to take this division, three contenders that I think will be big challengers to that lock, and a Dark Horse team that I was really impressed with and I think could really disrupt the technology division. Now, I know there's going to be other contenders out there, but we can't just list off everyone. That really wouldn't be a prediction then, right? Plus, you can tell me in the comments why I'm wrong anyway, so just go post down there. So, let's start with our lock. This is a team that I expect to win technology, and, and that's the team that not only has the best shirts, but also an incredible robot too, and that's 4039 Makeshift Robotics. 4039 proved that it wasn't just a pair up with 2056, a new market um, that made them really good. Also, congrats on the double gold cling bling too, but... To me, where they really proved themselves was that North Bay in Week 4, winning with 865 and 8731. They bring versatile autos and are really quick, and I appreciated 439's tele-up strategy of short passes and then quick speaker cycles. They're not 100%, but overall quite impressive, and I want to see their amp get a little bit quicker, and that's where I think their optimization could be. They're a bit nitpicks, and to me, the only thing that really holds this team back is a lack of climb and trap shot, and so that means they could end up ranking a little bit lower, but I expect this team to still win this division. Next up are your contenders. These are teams I think will best challenge 4039 or could be that number one seed that picks 4039 as well too. So it'd be very interesting. First up is 3161 Tronic Titans. Uh, they have a similar robot to 4039 and also bring a quick climb too. What I think holds back 3161 from being a lock is a slower speaker cycle than makeshift robotics. They seem to just take a little bit longer to line up and fire. So hopefully they've optimized this and they could very well end up being the number one seed. My next contender is a double, double gold cling bling at Waterloo, and that's 4476 Waffles. They went out a bit early at Newmarket, but at Waterloo really turned it up. Their autos could use a little bit more tuning, but they have a great amp and speaker shot. It was a tough call between picking them and their alliance partner 5024 as a contender, but I think Waffle brings more versatility in regards to the speaker shot, and if they can get their autos tuned in, they really have a great shot to take this division. 
My final contender is going to be my favorite robot on the field here, and that's 5409 Chargers. They've yet to see their finals, but I really like this machine. Opting to focus on amp and trap shots, this could end up being a very interesting disruptor as their trap is wicked fast, climbing and scoring in just a few seconds. And by going this route paired up with a top, top tier speaker score, I'm not going to lie, I really want to see this strategy work and pay off. So how about a Dark Horse team? This is a team that I feel has a lot of upside and could sneak through and play spoiler uh, from our aforementioned teams. And to me, that's 7558 Alt F4. Sword Driver the turret. This robot is fast, brings versatility to shoot from the backstage area and really over the field. Able to do a low and high pass and also a climb, this team could be an incredible alliance partner for those looking for a great speaker shooter and reliable climbing robot. I know there's other teams out there that deserve shout outs, and it was difficult to pick just five to highlight, but I look forward to attending this fantastic event and meeting so many of you this weekend. It's a good look to all teams in the technology division. Thanks, Tyler. Let's move over to James, who will be covering the science division in the Ontario district. James? This forecast will be for the science division of the first Ontario Provisional Championship. Many favorites, both historically and from this year specifically, are in this division, so almost any team could win the event. However, starting us off will be our only lock for the event with Team 2056 OP Robotics from Stony Creek, Ontario. OP is your reigning, defending, and this year currently undefeated champions of the Ontario District. After their shocking early exit from the first championship last year, OP came in this year firing on all cylinders. You want scoring in the speaker and amp? OP's got you. You want to be fed? OP's got you. You want to run your auto? Perfectly fine, OP has an auto that works just fine with yours. You want to score in the trap? You do you. OP is going to harmonize over here. I could talk forever about this robot, but one thing is clear at this moment. This is OP's potentially best robot ever, and that is saying something based on their history. Our first contender will be Team 3686 Team Dave from Barrie, Ontario. Previously, they won the Georgian event. They are a fast cycler adept at all aspects of the game, except trapping. However, they had a tough time at the University of Waterloo event where they made it to the finals but fell just short. These issues are what is keeping 3686 out of the top spot with OP. Working out the issues they faced at Waterloo and getting their auto and vision overall more reliable will make them a favorite at the event. Our next contender is going to be Team 2200 MM Robotics from Burlington, Ontario. The first truly do everything bot on this list, they may have had a finalist exit from the Humber College event, but they came back just a week later at McMaster University and showed just how great they truly were. The perfect complement to any robot, they're fast at both the speaker and the amp. They have autos that complement others, and like we implied earlier, a reliable trap mechanism. The only thing holding them back from the top is not seeing them feed quite as much and possibly being susceptible to blocker defense, something they themselves implemented on their alliance partner at McMaster. However, if they're able to show off the ability to deal with defense and the ability to adapt to potentially having to become the feeder, they could take the top spot with OP like they did at McMaster. Our final contender is going to be Team 5406 Celtex from Hamilton, Ontario. 5406 is a deceptively quick machine with a good shot from distance. This distance shock makes them defending makes defending them a tougher challenge despite their short stature. However, they were never able to really bring it together for a win over the season, being finalist and fourth at their two events. This is what's keeping them out of being a lock. However, with some of the lesser shown autos in their back pocket and a trap mechanism, 5406 can make a play for the top seed and possibly the championship oath brawl. Finally, rounding out the group is our Dark Horse, Team 4343 Max Tech from Aurora, Ontario. Now, 4343 had a relatively quiet season, finishing 4th and 2nd at their two qualifying events. However, 4343 has something very good going for them. Simplicity. Max Tech is a super simple robot that not a lot can go wrong with. Their intake is reminiscent of 2023 style intakes where you just drive into the wall at the source and in goes your scoring, uh, in goes your game piece. Their shooter is also very accurate, although they are not taking a whole lot of shots from distance. The big thing holding them back are a lack of climber and that they are not as fast a cycler as the contenders, but an event with as many good cyclers as the science division has, they may not need to be. With the right schedule, the simple little robot could make a deep play into district championships, especially if others above them have mechanical issues. 
With everything being said, our prediction for the winning alliance for the science division will be 2056, 3686, and 3739 Oak Botics. 2056 feeds 3686, while 3739 either plays defense or runs the occasional feed or drop off cycle. But the real key to, to the 3739 pick is that they are a relatively under the radar team who finished 7th at both their events. However, they do have a 4 0 close auto that is just one good code cleanup away from being super accurate. If this is accomplished, they have now the perfect auto to companion OP and Dave, allowing those two powerhouses to run to the line. This division is just so stacked that there would be no way possible to cover every team deserving of recognition. We didn't even remember previous champions, we didn't even mention, I should say, previous champions such as Symbotics and Theory 6. Let us know in the comments if there's anyone else that we didn't mention and who we should keep an eye out for this weekend at the Science Division. Thanks, James. Let's move out of Canada and head to the U.S. West, where we have our correspondent LJ covering the PNW District Championship. LJ? Over here in the Pacific Northwest District Championship, this year's qual list of qualifiers is one of the fiercest rosters I have seen at a district-level event. There are so many teams here that perform extraordinarily well at district events, and the skill level is close for a lot of these teams. There's been a large number of upsets regarding qualifications this year, as a lot of teams have historically gone the worlds have been pushed off by lesser-known teams rising. COVID area FRC is definitely over. On that list includes 2990 Hotwire, 3636 Generals Robotics, 7461 Sushi Squad, 4089 Stealth Robotics, and 955 Control C, all of which have gone the worlds in the past two years but did not qualify for DCMP this year. Some notable teams we see coming to this event include 2521 Cert, 1778 Chill Out, 360 Revolution, 2910 Jack in the Bot, 2011 Stormbots, 4043 Nerd Herd, and 2046 Bear Metal. Let's dive into our locks, contenders, and dark horse for this event. Our first lock is 2910 Jack in the Bot. Coming from their two district event wins as first alliance captains, they are the top pick for this coming competition. Coming from their two district event wins as first alliance captain, they are a top pick for this coming competition, having iterated off of their previous design to add an ant mechanism which will aid them at DCMP, as an upcoming meta has been to have two speaker bots that can also shoot in the ant to maximize cycle climb during the amplified period. Currently ranked 24th in the world, I'm excited to see their bot perform this weekend. Our second lock is 2046 bare metal. Now they had a bit of a rougher start to this season, they had a number of issues regarding durability at their first district event, but managed to pull ahead and win the event as first pick of the first alliance. However, even despite their issues, they have won all three district events they have gone to, and have yet to reach their bot ceiling. Currently ranked second in the district, I'm looking forward to watching them perform. Let's move on to our contenders. Our first contender is 2521SIR. Also coming off of two consecutive district event wins as first alliance captain, and almost entirely undefeated as with a win-loss score of 34 wins and one loss, they have been shocking everybody both this year and last. In 2022, they had not even gone to Worlds before, and yet they are currently ranked first in the district and 21st in the world. With a very simple and efficient design allowing for both speaker and amp scoring, they have impressed everyone with their incredibly consistent and precise autos despite minimal to no vision. Our second contender is 2011 Stormbots. Currently ranked in the top 50 teams worldwide for Endgame EPA, they've been impressing at their first two district events, winning one and ending event finalists at the other. With the ability to score an amp, speaker, and trap, I expect them to rank high this coming competition. Now let's take a look at our Dark Horse. Our Dark Horse for this event is the 2412 Robototes. While they have only qualified for DCMP with Impact Award, their bot has the capability to perform well with a pivoting shooter that scores in both AMP and Speaker. And despite ranking 76 in the district, I expect them to be a strategic high pick. As for my finals predicted alliance, I expect 2910 and 2046 to do a repeat of last year, with 4125 as their second pick. This competition is packed with very competitive teams. I cannot wait to see how this event plays out. Good luck to all the teams competing! Thanks, LJ. Let's move over to our correspondent, Griffin, who will be covering the Chesapeake District Championship. Griffin? We've come to the final act of Chesapeake, as 54 of the district's finest teams will converge at Virginia State University in Petersburg for the Chesapeake District Championships. A quick analysis of the events we've had, all of the events have had the number one seed in the finals, with all but the two Week 3 events having the first seed take the blue banner. 
With the convergence of multiple teams that can perform at a very high level, alliance selections and eliminations will be a very interesting sight to behold. For this segment, we'll be looking at some locks, contenders, and one dark horse who are all ones to watch out for and could potentially take the number one seed at the event. So without further ado, let's get into it. My first lock for this event is going to be the reigning district champs 1731 Fresta Valley Robotics. Supporting a six note auto week one, Fresta dominated their two district events, winning on the first alliance at each event with a fast cycling shooter and a fast and consistent trap scoring mechanism as a cherry on top. While many teams are looking to have trap mechanisms working this week, Fresta will have the drive practice that some of these teams won't have, which will easily give them an advantage to hold the number one seed over others. Well, this is the team I expect to be the number one seed, unless the match schedule goes against their favor. But it's likely that they're able to hold the number one seed anyways due to the floor of this competition being so high compared to what it has been for previous years. My second lock for this competition goes to another double banner winner in 449 Blair Robot Project. Being the first pick at both of their events is a major statement, as their shooting capability and auto routines have put them above the rest. Coming into this event, they will definitely be looking to make the magic shots with centerline auto routines, very consistent shooting, and a fast climb to boot. They are looking like another very strong bot to, wa bot to watch out for at this event. While I don't predict they will be the number one seed given their lack of trap scoring, a consistent showing like they had in their previous events will definitely keep them in the contention for that first pick spot. Now for the contenders. There's multiple teams I see as contenders. There's an argument to be made for a reasonably 15 or more teams to be considered for these two slots I have here. But these two teams I chose based on their previous performances and the ceilings their robots can hit. First up is 1727 Rex. Being the first seed at both their events is a feat in itself. But their first event was one of the previous mentioned events where the number one seed fell short in the finals. But they got most of their technical problems sorted for the second event and were able to secure a win. With some heavy scoring, centerline auto capabilities, and ability to trap a uh, note score, 1727 is looking hungry to mimic their first seed grab from last year. Where 1727 may have concerns is in their consistency, as their trap mechanism has been hit or miss, and they've shown to have some technical issues on the field at times. If they're able to correct those problems, Rex could easily take the crown this year. My other contender is 422 MechTech Dragons. After being a finalist at Ashland and winners of Portsmouth, 422 is definitely looking to blaze through the competition with their long-range shooting, extremely effective feeder strategy, and newly added 2910 style amp arm. The main drawbacks for, uh, for 422 will come from their consistency. Known to have technical issues on the field, as well as an aggressive driving style that has resulted in flags from refs and a red card from the Ashland finals, 422 is looking to hone in on their bellies and sink their teeth into another blue banner. Many teams in CHS have come out of the woodworks this year, producing some extremely competitive bots for the season. One of those teams is my dark horse pick, the Squat Squad themselves, 3136 Orca. After being third at Ashland and first seed finalist in Glen Allen, 3136 comes into the event boasting a consistent and nimble bot that hoovers up the notes and sinks them into the speaker. On their Open Alliance posts, they've shown that they have now changed their gear ratios and updated their code, making their robot a very nimble bot that can now shoot from afar, with, which definitely makes them a bigger fish in the ocean at the competition here. Orca's biggest focus needs to be on the fine-tuning of their strategy and flow of the game to make sure that the efficiency and the notes hit every single time. And if they're able to keep that consistently throughout, they might be an unstoppable force all the way to the end. Overall, I think that this is going to be one event to look out for because teams are going to be hungry for this win and every single team can be a viable pick. Like my base prediction for a finals alliance is going to be 1731 as the number one seed with their first pick being 449, but there are so many teams that could beat this uh, last pick. And if I had to take a guess, this last pick, let's say 5587. That is my baseline prediction, but it could easily change, shift, and redirect based upon how this goes. So I can't wait to see Chesapeake play out. Thanks, Griffin. Let's move over to the Northeast, where we have our correspondent, James, covering the FMA District Championship. James? This forecast will be coming out of the Northeast region and will be about the first Mid-Atlantic District Championship. This group of 60 teams is made up of not only past district champions, but also Einstein winners and Hall of Famers. 
Also, as of this moment, based on average EPA, this is the third strongest top 8 and second strongest top 24 of any event prior to Champs. Starting us off will be our only lock, Team 5895 Petty Robotics from Highstown, New Jersey. Petty is coming into District Champs with the highest EPA and the second most district points in the Mid-Atlantic region. They also have been on an undefeated streak of events in FMA since 2020, having won every single district qualifying event and district championship since then that they've attended. Petty is a slick machine that they were able to show off quite effectively back in week one at Hatboro Horsham and then again at Ben Salem in week four. Their quick under the bumper intake makes multi-game piece autos easy and they have shown off multiple very accurate autos at their two qualifying events. During teleop, their design allows for quick scoring in the amp and they have an incredibly accurate shot from distance for the speaker. These skills would lead to them seating second and first at their qualifying events, both times being on the first seat alliance and going through Elims undefeated. After seeing how much they improve between their events, we imagine 5895 will be even better at District Champs and will continue their dominant win streak. Our first contender will be Team 103 Cybersonics from Kindersville, Pennsylvania. Coming into 2024, despite ranking well at several events and making finals a few times, 103 had last won a blue banner all the way back in 2017. However, they broke this unfortunate streak at Allentown and followed up at Ben Salem with yet another win. 103 has quite the arsenal of autos they have shown off, including a three-game piece far, four-game piece close, and a four-game piece race. They are one of the most versatile auto teams in the Mid-Atlantic District. 103 has also shown their willingness to upgrade between events, adding a climber between their two qualifying events to better assist in securing ensemble RPs. They added this to a deceptively simple robot that is driven almost perfectly to make them a force to be reckoned with. The things keeping them out of being a lock is actually what makes them such a solid contender. It's their consistency. 103 lacks the high highs of some of their contemporaries, but then also lacks the low lows. If 103 can increase their ceiling without lowering their floor, they will be dominant, but so far they are just Mr. Consistent. Our next contender is Team 1923, the Midnight Inventors from Plainsboro, New Jersey. Midnight Inventors is a team that should need no introduction, however most teams overlook how truly spectacular they have been since coming back from the pandemic. Being a two-time district championship finalist and a one-time district championship winner, despite there only being two district championships in that time. This is a confusing accolade and is something that no one else most likely can or ever will accomplish again. To put a focus on this year, 1923 had a standout performance at Allentown and looked to repeat it at Montgomery. However, it wasn't the case as they clearly had vision issues during the Elims bracket and couldn't recover in time. These issues are what's going to keep them out of being a lock. However, what makes them how what makes them a contender is how good they are when functioning. Their baby bird feed at the source is a fast or faster than most ground intakes. Their shooter is good from a distance, and their feeding is top notch. They also have recently shown improvements to their amp cycling as well as a leaf blower trap mechanism that, if functional, will truly disrupt the rankings of the district championship. Our final contender will be Team 2539, the Krypton Cougars from Palmyra, Pennsylvania. 2539 ranked first at both their events and capped in their alliances through Elam's brackets undefeated. They are a consistent machine and are able to play all aspects of the game being the only traditional trapper thus far on the list. So what's keeping them out of being a lock? Well, they have shown less autos than most teams, focusing on the three close and run to the line auto, and it looks like their amping ability may have regressed between their week one and week three events. However, they have had multiple weeks to get their gremlins worked out, and so long as they play their game, the currently number one ranked team in FMA may be able to keep their streak of first seeds alive. Finally, rounding out this group is our Dark Horse, 272 Cyber Crusaders from Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Now, 272 has a third and second place finish, and if you've only watched their Elims performances, you may be confused. However, the most important aspect of their game actually happens in quals. At their most recent event, 272 had a perfect co-op score, which they achieved via sometimes having to score in the opponent's amp themselves, as well as achieving the ensemble RP in every match but one, and they wound up being only a single RP behind PD and would have the tiebreaker over them at the event. This was achieved via the most consistent trap mechanism in the district. The big thing holding them back is they are not as fast a cycler as the contenders, but at an event with a whole lot of good cyclers and not a whole lot of good trappers, 272 with the right schedule could be a major spoiler to the powerhouses teaming up. With all this being said, our prediction for the winning alliance will be 5895, 2539, and 223. 5895 continues to be a scoring powerhouse, 2539 gets their issues resolved, and 223 has a somewhat consistent 4-note auto, making them the perfect complement to the number one seed, allowing the two powerhouses to run to the line as opposed to focusing on the close notes and auto. We look forward to seeing the Mid-Atlantic District Championship shapes up and who will be heading to the first championship in just two short weeks. Thanks, James. Let's move over to the Peachtree District, where we have our correspondent, Justin, 
covering the district championship over there. Justin? What a fun season it has been. It's finally here. District Champs Week is finally here. So since I've been covering and competing in all season long, let me give you a little bit of insight into the Peachtree District Championship. We'll be competing down in Macon, Georgia at Mercer University. 50 teams will be attending from across Georgia and South Carolina. It's going to be hard to predict too much in the way of rankings, but here are some teams that could easily make it as an Alliance captain or as a first pick. In no particular order, I'm watching out for 4533 Phoenix, 1414 IHOT, 1287 Aluminum Assault, 6340 The Bears Manatees, 3049 Category 5, 1746 Auto, 4451 Robots Garage, 4509 The Mechanical Bulls, 342 The Burning Magnetos, 1683 The Techno Titans, 6366 Ramrods, 6919 The Condors, and 1102 Making Magic. But let's talk about some of the big ones here. First up is going to be my lock, and it's got to be none other than 1771 North Gwinnett. If you don't know, a little fun fact about this team, they build most of their robot structure from wood. Uh, they were winners at six of their last seven qualifier events dating back to 2020, and finalists of the one that they didn't win. Also throw in a district championship in there. But that's just the history. This year they have ranked first and won at both of their events. They have fast, accurate cycles on the speaker and amp. But the biggest thing locking them into the number one rank at champs again for me has got to be their autonomous. They can regularly put up 5-6 to six notes in auto, quickly racking up 30 points on their own. This has earned them the third highest autonomous EPA in the world, trailing only the likes of 2056 and 1323. They're also ranked 19th in the world overall EPA and first in the district. This team will be hard to beat. My three contenders are hard to order because they have both won, they, they have all won both of their events this year, but I'm going to do my best. First contender I'm going to mention is 2974 Walton. Their history is similar to 1771's, having won five out of their last seven qualifier events. Walton, however, has won two district championships dating back to 2019. This year at their qualifiers, they not only won but were ranked first, and they did it without any sort of climber, which also means no trap mechanism. But they are fast cycling both speaker and amp, and are second ranked overall EP in the district for it. At Anderson, they mentioned to me that they hope to have a climber by district champs, but having won twice without it, let's see if they even bother with it. I fully expect them to team up with North Gwinnett again, as they have the past two district championships. They won together in 2022, but fell a little bit short in 2023. Next up is 1261, the Robo Lions. They ranked second at both their qualifier events and teamed up with North Gwinnett to win both of them. They have a consistent four-piece auto that pairs well with 1771s and strong consistent shooting and amp cycles just like these other two. The only reason I chose to put them below Walton is because of their EPA numbers and their history isn't quite there like Walton and Gwinnett. However, they have worked well with 1771 at both the qualifier events and knowing each other's driving styles and their autos pairing up well, I wouldn't be surprised to see them disrupt the Walton-Gwinnett alliance streak. Our third contender is going to be our winners from both the South Carolina events 343 Metal in Motion. One of the most consistent ant bots in the district, a strong shooter, and the ability to do the trap makes for some high ranking scores from this team. They haven't been as strong as the other teams I've mentioned so far, but they have been improving. I've seen some clips of their new shooter modifications that make it a little bit more accurate simply by adjusting the positions of the wheels. It is impressive, and they would make a great partner for any of these teams, and I expect to see them in the finals. My dark horse pick here is going to be my friends at 34.90 Viper Trav. They struggled early at Anderson, and they were overlooked by most scouters. But they got their issues fixed, and Saturday morning they came to life. They made their way all the way up to finals. Their alliance partners had some issues here, and they couldn't quite keep up with Walton and 3.43, but they showed that they had something under the hood. At Charleston, they performed better throughout the event, and helped put up not quite the highest score of the event, but one of the higher scores. There's a diamond in the rough with this team, and I suspect if you aren't careful, they might bite. Now for our winning alliance prediction, if I go by the numbers in history, I have to say it's going to be 1771 and 2974 with, say, 2415, the Wildcats. However, I know how tenacious some of the teams in this district are, and while these picks look good on paper, it can really go with quite a few different combinations of teams. So we'll see how that plays out. Let me know what you think of these picks in the comments. I'll be at District Champs hoping to film some behind the bumpers interviews and supporting my own team, 342, the Burning Mountain Eaters. So if you see me there, feel free to stop and say hi, and I'll see you all next week for the recap.
We hope you're enjoying this video here on fun. If so, do make sure you click that subscribe button to stay up to date on all fun YouTube videos and give the video a thumbs up. It really does help. We'd like to thank this show's sponsor, Kettering University, for their support of fun. Those who are accepting the Kettering University are eligible to achieve up to $5,000 a year in a robotic scholarship. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to get more information about Kettering University and the robotic scholarship. Over 30% of those who attend Kettering University were in high school robotics to so go attend somewhere that has so many other people like you at kettering.edu slash first. Thanks, Justin. Let's move over to our correspondent, Adam, who will be covering the first in Indiana district championship. Adam? Welcome back to Indiana for the District Championship event forecast. With everyone vying for a spot at Champs in Houston and 11 total spots, matches are sure to be featuring such teams as 868 Tech Hounds with two event wins, 1741 Red Alert with two finals appearances, and an incredibly deep field. Let's start by getting into the locks. Starting with our first lock is 4272 Maverick Robotics. Proving their perseverance both at their first event and through the lower bracket before their second event win, 4272 met the gremlins of their robot and blazed through them, showing they can make a powerful alliance and what best many other incredible robots. While they also have a solid autonomous period, their teleop is where they shine, with quick cycling and smart thinking to navigate and create high score. Our second lock is Team 461 Westside Boiler Invasion. They have been incredible all year long with a consistently good performance all throughout the match and into playoffs. While Plainfield didn't go their way, I believe the two weeks of additional practice and improvement will allow them to get back to their new normal of consistently successful elimination runs and be a powerhouse on the Moving on to our contenders, first up is 7457 Super Duper Robotics. This year has had some difficulties during eliminations, but I imagine with two weeks to prepare, these have been minimized heavily if not crushed altogether. Super Duper has proven their dominance in auto, averaging over 16 points, and with an evenly strong teleop, I could see them playing a big role in a powerful alliance, either as a first pick or low seed captain. Our second contender is Team 1741 Red Alert. With three events now completed and their shortest eliminations run still taking them to match 13, 1741 is clearly a strong speaker robot capable of being a strong force on the while their main strength being an incredibly well-driven teleop, I'm excited to see how they perform this weekend, as well as what auto improvements have been made to help boost them that much higher. Finally, we have our Dark Horse making another appearance, 3865 Riley Wildbots. I believe that while this isn't the most offensively capable robot, it has made two finals appearances and for good reason. Shutdown defense has been largely unstoppable and has resulted in holding sometimes entire alliances back. I have complete confidence that while on paper 3865 may not seem like they could have a second banner this year as a district champion, but I will never feel a match as easy when they are on the opposing alliance and wouldn't be surprised at all if they are preparing for Texas. That wraps up our forecast for the Week 6 Indiana District Championship. Good luck to all teams competing, and let us know your predictions for this upcoming weekend. Thanks, Adam. Let's head over to First in North Carolina, where we have our correspondent, Evan, covering the district championship over there. Evan? The North Carolina DCMP will absolutely be the most competitive event so far in North Carolina. It is the largest event in the state with 40 teams competing and it is held at Eastern Carolina University in Greenville, North Carolina. As it is the state championship event, we have teams from all over the state playing and multiple teams have not played together at all yet. It is bound to be an exciting and competitive event where almost anything can happen. Let's get straight into it with one lock, three contenders, and one dark horse. Our one and only lock just has to be 9496 Link from Forest City NC. They are a rookie team and they have been absolutely amazing so far this season. They went out of state for the week one Chesapeake Blacksburg event. They were rank one and won that event. They also won both the UNC Asheville First North Carolina event and the FNC Mecklenburg event. With three blue banners under their belt, they are set to be very strong at DCMP, and I would not be surprised to see them ranking one or winning the event. With an innovative control system allowing them a range of shot locations without moving parts, they are the essence of a simple and effective robot. They are definitely a lock for this event. Moving on to our three contenders, we'll start with Team 4795, the East Box. They are a team that has done really well this year with one win under their belt from the Week 1 Orange County event, and they have a robot that is extremely versatile. Additionally, they have had three weeks from their last event for tuning and up improvements. Due to this, I see an 
expect to see a robot that is very well tuned and effective at district champs. Uh, utilizing an under the bumper intake and their shooter on a pivot, they can tune for a range of shot locations. And coupled with how fast they are, they will definitely be a top contender. Our second contender is 8727 Glitch 2.0. They ranked number two and won the UNC Asho event, which was the most competitive in the state so far. They also won the UNC Pembroke Week 2 event. They are a team that has been really strong in the season and have a really effective robot. They have a full width intake and their shooter is very fast. With a 5 no auto and a fast pivot for ha and handoff, this is a team that is competitive. With one win under their belt, I can see them being a really strong team at DCMP. Our last contender is Team 3506 Yeti from Charlotte, North Carolina. This is a team that has done really well this year, making it to finals at UNC Asheville in match 13 at Mecklenburg. Despite dealing with reliability issues at Asheville and Mecklenburg, they were effective when they played. As they had two back-to-back -back competitions, I expect to see substantial improvements both mechanically and with tuning before DCMP. With their handoff to a pivoting shooter, they have a wide range of angles to shoot from, making them a very versatile robot. Coupled with their strong amp performance, I believe that with a few improvements, they could easily be a top robot at district champs. Lastly, our dark horse for this event is Team 9150 Labyrinth. They have a super unique and well-designed robot, and they could be the ultimate dark horse. This is another second-year team that has done well this year. Despite ranking in the lower end of district points, they have one of the most unique robots in North Carolina. With their pivoting shooter located inside an elevator, they are definitely one of the most unique robots look on the field. While they've been an amp bot for the season so far, with extra tuning, I can see them being an effective scorer in both the speaker and the amp. I think they will truly unlock their potential of the potential of this robot at DCMP. And with an event that has such a deep field such as this District Champs, almost anything can happen and I'm super excited to see how this turns out. Be sure to put your predictions for the teams you would have chosen for this event in the comments below. And that concludes this segment of FRC Forecast. Thanks, Evan. Let's head over to First in Texas, where we have me covering the Mercury Division. Texas, it's time. After five weeks of competing, we're now at week six for the Texas District Championship. Before we get into the Mercury Division, let me explain that this was a really hard event to forecast. Just to give you an idea of how competitive this event is, six of the top ten teams in te Texas are on this field. With that being said, if I could put the, those teams as contenders, I would. But the rules say I gotta make a lock, and I have to have some contenders and a dark horse. So... Let's move on into the dark, into the lock. The lock for the Mercury Division had to, meet, had to meet two requirements. One, they had to have a lot of experience playing the game because they need to understand the relationship between the amp and the speaker. But two, they also needed a good autonomous because if you can get that early lead in auto, you can dominate. You it's easier for you to dominate the game. So with that being said, my lock for Mercury is going to be 118 Robonauts. With their official record of 69, 10, and 1, this team definitely has the experience and understands how this game is played this year. But when it comes to auto, I love how their auto not only scores, but positions them to end up on the center line so that in teleop, they can pick up the missed notes and send them to their side to gain an extra advantage. For, with that being said, that is the reason why 118 is on my lock. Moving on to our contenders. Our first contender is 3005. 3005 definitely understands the game. Coming up with a passing strategy in Texas, they definitely have been reading the rules and trying to come up with strategies that take advantage. 3005 is a, is a fast moving robot that not, can not, not only just score, but also can pass the game pieces. I don't expect 3005 to be so far behind 118. They're going to be neck and neck. And 3005 is going to cause a stir. It's going to be the question of who picks who in this event. We go down to our next contender, 2468, also with 3005 dominating this season. A 2468 has that touch it on uh, intake style, which helps them tremendously. They have also been shown to be an extremely reliable passing robot. And not only that, they've also um can be a high scoring robot when needed 
So 2468, definitely a contender at this event. My final contender is going to be 9128 Akan Robotics. Why? Well, they have an amazing robot, and just because they have a nine in their in their number doesn't mean that there's something that they're a team that you need to blow off. No. This team has definitely shown that they are a threat to contenders and are and locks at the events. Uh, 9128 has won a blue banner and what I'm going to say about 9128 is that they can elevate any alliance they're part of. What I'm going to say about our lock and contender, it's going to be one of them's going to pick the other one and then the other alliance is going to have the other two and it's going to come down to that third pick to see who's going to elevate that alliance against the other one. So speaking of third pick or second picks, let's move on to our dark horse. Our dark horse for the Mercury Division is 6357, the Spring Constants. Why 6357, the Spring Constants? Well, I'll tell you. I feel that teams are not going to regard 6357 as high in the beginning because they did not, they were the only team in Texas to qualify for state that did not meet the district point cutoff. But 6357 has grown since their first event in Belton and it's been a team that I've been keeping a close eye on and I assure you that they are not just sitting around in their shop right now doing nothing they have been working hard and I expect them to uh, deliver a machine that delivers they have a good autonomous that can complement any of the higher teams and they can uh, score well with that being said these are my locks contenders and dark horses for the mercury division let me know down below who you think what what you think the order should be or who you think should be on that list for the mercury division thanks me let's head over to tasif to find out more about the apollo division the first of texas dcmp apollo division is out and we have 43 teams competing in this division there's a bunch of great teams in this division and it was really really hard to pick my lock contenders and dark horse for this event but i'm really excited to walk down with you guys with my picks and let me know your thoughts in the comments because this is a divisions are always hard to pick but it's the rankings are for sure going to be going up and down every single after every single qualification match so definitely keep an eye on apollo but starting off with my lock is team 148 robo wranglers District event winners for Plano week two and week four Dallas with a total EPA of 36.2. They are an amazing team to watch. They went undefeated during qualifications at Dallas, lost one match in playoffs, but were able to come back with a W. They are an amazing team. Of course, it's 148. They have an amazing under the bumper robot. Literally, they can drive over notes like it's nothing. It is an amazing robot to watch. And I'm really excited to see them walk, play again in the Apollo division. For my first contender in no particular order, but I have Team 5414 Paradox. Also with two district event wins on Week 2 Belton and Week 4 Houston. They also went undefeated in Houston, but lost one playoff match. But 5414 Paradox is such an amazing team. They have a amazing shooter able to shoot across the field, also a simple amp mechanism. I'm really excited to see this team perform in person this time. And knowing Paradox, they're doing a little bit of rework behind the scenes right now, but I know they will show off at Apollo. For my next contender, I have Team 3847 Spectrum. They are an amazing team overall, Open Alliance team as well. So they have been posting everything they have done with their robot on Chief Delphi and in, in, in their blogs. So make sure to keep an eye on that. They also post scouting data and everything like that. So of course, they're an amazing team. They have one event win at Belton Week 2 and a finalist in Houston with a total EPA coming out at 37.5. They're an amazing robot underneath the bumper in robot and always fast and amazing to watch. Finally, my last contender is Team 624 Kryptonite. Such a small packaged robot, but fast on the field. Knowing Kryptonite, they're an amazing autonomous team and vision team, and they still are. They were finalists at the KD event week one, and they were winners of the San Antonio event week three. Now, since their last event was week three, you know they had a bunch of time to work on the robot to make it even better. So I'm excited to see them play at Apollo. 
Finally, for my dark horse, I have Team 5431 Titan Robotics. They competed at Week 2 Plano and Week 4 Dallas. They had a rough start at Plano, and they started to get a little bit better at Dallas, but now they have shown up as a, a little bit biased. I'm a mentor and alumni of 5431, but they now have an amp mechanism and a climber that has been pretty consistent in practice. So I'm excited to see it work on a competition field. Now, I want to wish everyone a good luck in the First in Texas DCMP. I will be there, so make sure to come by and say hi. Good luck, everyone. Thanks, Tossif. Let's head over to First in Michigan, where we have our correspondent, James, covering the Aptiv division. James? The First in Michigan State Championship is perennially one of the best events to watch all year in FRC, and this year is no different. The First in Michigan Aptiv division has set the groundwork to be an absolute bloodbath and is certainly the event to watch this week. With arguably four of the top teams in the state, every match from qualifications to playoffs will be a treat to watch. It seems like every team was a contender at their district event, and certainly all 40 robots in this field will not go down without a fight. Without further ado, let's take a look at the locks, contenders, and dark horse for the field. My first lock for the event is my favorite for both the Aptive field and Fimstein, and that is Hall of Fame Team 67, the Hot Team. I got a chance to interview the heroes of tomorrow at the Ann Arbor district event, and wow! This team is elite. They have speed, they have accuracy, they are the whole package. They get to the center line faster than anyone else with their consistent six piece Auton. They trap 100% of the time they've attempted it and that will certainly help them rank well. And I fully expect them to be shooting from the wing line accurately by this time. 67 already won Milford and Ann Arbor and I expect them to do very well here on Aptiv. We'll see if they get the chance to pick their favorite third robot, Team 7660, the Biting Irish to win their third event together this season. My next lock is without a question, Team 2075, Enigma Robotics. Enigma was the number one alliance captain and winners of the Johnston division at Champs last year and is fresh off a number one alliance captain win at Kentwood last week. 2075 is smooth and well executed with speedy autons, trap mechanism, powerful shooting. What more can you ask for in a robot? If they get the chance, I think a 67 and 2075 alliance would be electric to watch and would certainly be the favorite to win Michigan. We'll see what our contenders have to say about it, however. Our contenders for this event share the same hard loss in week four at West Michigan, knocking them down to the contender category. However, certainly they will not go down without a fight. Our first contender this weekend is 2767 Strike Force. Strike Force made Fimstein in 2017, in 2018, in 2019, in 2022. However, their perfect stream streak fell two points short on this very active field last year, allied with our next contender. With a win under their belt from St. Joseph in an unmatched strategy department, 2767 will definitely make another run at Fimstein this year. Our next contender is Team 3357 in the Comets. They are killing it this year with their first year of swerve and will race their way to victory this weekend on Aptiv. With a lack of the track mechanism and a shaky amp mechanism, that could show them some troubles this weekend. However, their unbelievable spe speaker scoring will not go unnoticed. Will the Comets and Strike Force redeem their two event losing streak together? Or will the classic Comets Enigma Grand Rapids Alliance strike once again? I can't wait to see what happens next on Aptiv. My dark horse for the field is Team 1711, the Raptors, winners of the Traverse City District and finalists at Lake City. This small little robot could form a powerful alliance in that mid-alliance range. If they fall to a second, mi a second pick, oh man, am I excited for that alliance. We'll see if the top seeds dominate Aptiv, or if a more balanced, lower alliance can take the cake. Without a doubt, the stands in Aptiv will be packed all weekend long, as we'll be watching what is essentially a rematch of the stacked 2023 Aptiv field, but with some new faces. We'll see how Aptiv and all the other FIM fields play, but who do you guys think should have been included on this list? Let us know down below, and best of luck to all the FIM teams that are competing this weekend at the Michigan State Championship. Thanks, James. Moving on, we have our very own Nick covering the DTE division. Nick? Starting us off here in the DTE Energy Division at this year's Michigan State Championship. Looking at the EPA graph of overall divisions, they all look to be relatively balanced. But on the surface for this one, looking at the top 10 teams, this is probably the most stacked division, in my opinion, at this year's Michigan State Championship. I have two locks, two contenders, and a dark horse that we're going to dive into, into this forecast. And I'm really excited to see what teams outside that I might have not highlighted in this compete as well. Uh, because there's so many good teams, it was hard to narrow down to specific ones that I really liked. But with the top 10 teams all having an EPA over 30, this one shapes up to be a really good one. 
Starting with my first lock of this uh, division, we're going to have Team 7769, The Crew, from Royal Oak, Michigan. They actually got to compete in three districts this year, which is pretty uncommon in Michigan just due to the number of slots that we had. We saw them at Berrien Springs. They were a finalist, ranked one with a 15-2 and two record. Then we saw them week three at Wayne State. They went 17-0, and 0, didn't lose a match, ranked one, won the event, and won the Judges Award. And then they got a third play in at the Troy event number two last weekend in week five, where they ranked number five, went 14 and four, and also won the event and the autonomous award. So the crew features a super fast drivetrain, super consistent autonomous, and as well as some great wing shots. And is probably, in my opinion, arguably one of the best amp robots in Michigan. And I expect that to be no different this weekend as they are my lock to compete for that top seed. My second lock of the event is going to be Team 5907, the CC Shambots. We saw them week two uh, at Kettering University, where they went 16-1. and one. They ranked one, won the event, and won the Excellence in Engineering Award. And then we saw them at week four at the Livonia District, where they won the event, um, had a super consistent autonomous. And, you know, right off the bat, CC Shamots were one of those teams that we saw early in the season and said, this is going to be a top five team in Michigan. And they're living up to that, you know, and I hope, I expect that they'll continue to live up to that coming into this weekend. Uh, two contenders that I picked out that I really liked for this event um, specifically, uh, starting with Team 4362, the CSPA Gems from Brighton. Um, they competed Week 1 and 3. Uh, they We saw them at Milford. They were picked up uh, by 3175 as the first seed, ended up losing to that 67503 line to the finals. But they were super consistent throughout the weekend, um, to have a great uh, shooter on that robot as well as the intake. And I'm excited to see you know how they build upon that. We saw them at Ann Arbor uh, Week Three, where they ranked number two, had a record of 15, one and one, won the event with 67 that they lost to uh, at Milford, and then um, also won the autonomous award there. So it's been three weeks since we've seen the gems. I expected that they've done a lot of improvement on that, and I'm curious to see where that is moving forward. Um, moving into my second contender, 6081, the Digital Dislocators. Uh, we saw them at Jackson and Kentwood. Uh, Jackson, they went undefeated week one, won the event, won the quality award. Kenwood, um, they had a, the hardest schedule at the event, ranked 15, went 12 and 8, still ended up as a finalist against that Tech Bikes Enigma Alliance, and then also won the Autonomous Award at that event, and I'm expecting them to build on upon that moving forward. Uh, Mike, Dark Horse for the event is a team that, you know, some team or some people outside of Michigan might not know, but if you're in Michigan, you know who they are, Team 6120, the Cyber Stangs. We saw them week two at Belleville and week five at Macomb. They feature a laser of a shooter, and if they can just dial in some of that accuracy, I really think they can make some noise this weekend. They went eight and six at uh, the Belleville event and won the judges award, and then went ten and six and lost in match twelve and ranked nine at that event. So, like I said, if they can clean up some of their uh, accuracy issues that they had and just a little bit faster, it's a tank robot that's super accurate. I'm excited to see where they moving forward into this week's Michigan State Championship. That's all from the DTE Energy Division. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Nick. Moving on with our coverage of the 1st in Michigan District, we have our correspondent Carter covering the Hemlock Division. Carter? This forecast will be coming out of the 1st in Michigan District where we will be checking out the Hemlock Semiconductor Division. There are 40 teams in this division, but five that stand out above the rest. That is 27 Rush, 4391 The Brave Bots, 5712 Hemlock's Gray Matter, 3175 Night Vision, and 85 Bob Built on Brains. Let's get into my five teams that will be my locks, contenders, and my dark horse for this event. My first and only lock for this division is going to be Team 27 Rush out of Clarkston, Michigan. This team has one world championship and three state championships under their belt, and you can see it in the machine that they produce every year that they are hungry for more. They have competed three times already this season and have ranked first at all of them and have taken home two blue banners. With an EPA of 44.2, some killer autos, a dead accurate shooter, and a consistent climber, I predict that Rush will take home this division, if not the entire state championship. Moving on to our contenders, I have uh, Team 4391, the Brave Bots from Gladstone as my first. 4391 ranked first and won both UP events this season, and just like Russia, are hungry for more. Since their last two events, the Brave Bots have added on a climber and an amp bar, which will only improve their performance for the state championship. With their very consistent autos, long range shooter, and their new and improved mechanisms on their robot, I expect 4391 to be a big name in this division. My second contender is going to have to be 3175 Night Vision from Gross Point Woods. Uh, although 3175 doesn't have any banners yet this season, it doesn't mean that they haven't been successful. They were finalists at both of their events so far and brought uh, the finals to the tiebreakers both times. If they have improved their long-range shooting and continued uh, the rest of what they know, I believe 3175 will be a force to reckon with at this division. 
And my last contender for this division is 57-12, Hemlock's Gray Matter from Hemlock, Michigan. 57-12 ran the show at the Midland District, ranking first at the uh, first and winning the event. With an EPA of 36.8, a consistent shooter, and amp shot, this super slick-looking robot has a lot of potential at the state championship, and I'm excited to see what they can do this weekend. Lastly, my dark horse for this event is no other than 4392, the Deceivers from Brimley, Michigan. The Deceivers are the definition of a dark horse, in my opinion. At their previous two events, uh, 4392 has had can issues as well as uh, issues getting stuck on notes, but I believe when they figure these issues out, they will begin to shine. They have a super long range wing shot that uh, they are consistent in hitting, and I believe that with more dry practice, the Deceivers will deceive the competition and creep up on everyone, potentially as a contender. Good luck to all team this weekend. Thanks, Carter. Let's move over to Tyler, who will be covering the Consumers Energy Division. Tyler? It's my favorite time of the year. It's district championship time, and I get to look at the FIM District Consumers Energy Field. FIM is in one of its best years with every team looking pretty strong. It was really hard to narrow down the five teams I put on this list. Uh, Statbotics has this event as the third rated out of the four, but doesn't mean all these teams are going out without a fight. Without further ado, let's take a look at the five teams I think are going to do well at this competition. Making a finals appearance at Wayne State as a Lions 2 second pick and going all the way to match 13 at Macomb, 35-39 Biting Bulldogs is going to be the first lock on Consumers Energy. Stats-wise, they're sitting at a 31.5 EPA, averaging about 8 notes in teleop, and have a 5-piece Auton that goes for note 3 on the center line. I think they're going to be a strong captain as that Auton does a good job at not blocking other robots going to the center line. Before we go on to our second lock, I want to give a shout out to Caitlin S. on 3539, who won Dean's List at Wayne State. Moving on to our second lock, this team won both of their events this year and is looking for the quad banner. It's going to be 2054, the Tech Vikes. Looking at this team, they had an impressive 10-0 average and is a whole cycle above everybody else in their division. The only drawback I saw is their close four Auton was a little bit suffocating grabbing notes that other robots could grab. But I believe they're going to debut some new Autons at States, and they're going to be one of the most competitive robots on this field. Moving on to our first contender, this team ranks second at both their events, and one Woodhaven, it's going to be 54-36, the Cybercats. I honestly believe this team could have been a lock. Ranking second at Inteliup's score with an impressive 9-0 average, but like 2054, I would have liked to see more in their Autons, as they also ran a 5-piece auto like 35-39, but not as reliable. If they could show some more competitive Autons, I think they would be a great captain for this field. Our second contender ranked high at both their events, being captain number two at both of them. It's 2611, the Jacktown Vectors. What really sold me on this team was how consistent their amp to center two auto was, as I have a feeling that's going to be the fastest auto to get to the center line on this field. With an impressive 8 no average, the only thing that kept them out of the lock was the fact that I didn't see any amp scoring at Lansing. But I have a feeling they worked on something before States, and I can see this team pairing well with 35-39, so they're going to be a strong run for this division win. There were so many good teams to talk about for Dark Horse, but one stood out to me and that it was 35-46, Bucking Gears. I got a chance to play with Bucking Gears at West Michigan, and they ended up being a really strong bot, having a pretty consistent passing shot and a front three auto. They were able to work really well and helped push our alliance to go all the way to the finals. I think they're going to be a strong alliance captain having a trap mechanism will probably end up in that fourth to five alliance captain spot. I have a feeling at one of these fields, four or five is going to go all the way for a division win, and I'm excited to see which one it's going to be. My prediction for this event is going to be 35-39 and 26-11 and 25-54, 54-36 pairing together in finals. But with so many of these teams consistently raking second in their event, it's anyone's game. I'm Tyler Hawley from 7211. I'm wishing you all good luck at your district championships or regionals. Thanks, Tyler. Well, that concludes week six of FRC Forecast. We hope you enjoyed our coverage of all the district championships. Be sure to let us know who your locks, contenders, and dark horses are for these events down below. With that being said, I'm Angel Miranda. You're watching FRC Forecast. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following.
Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.